Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh yes, yes, hallelujah. Father, thank you for tonight to give you praise and glory and honor. Thank you for the privilege again today uh, to come and worship you, Lord. I pray that, Lord, uh, for everyone who comes to this Zoom meeting, Lord, uh, my friends and brothers, sisters in Christ, I pray for the blessing of the Lord to be upon every person. Those that are Lord watching and, uh, and, and participating together on Facebook and YouTube, I pray the same grace to be upon them too. In the name of Jesus Christ, we break every work of Satan in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. What a privilege uh, to come and share today God's Word together. Uh, yes, uh, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, praise the Lord. So uh, today uh, I will continue on the teaching uh, from great grace and great power. We have been sharing this for a couple of uh, weeks now, probably. And uh, I believe today also God will bless our life through His Word. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So we trust God for His great grace and great power as well. And uh, what our scripture will be today from Colossians chapter 3 which we saw last time, Colossians 1 and 2. If you uh, want the previous messages, you can go on Facebook, like uh, previous pages, you can check that. 
for the great grace and great power. And God wants us to live in great grace and great power in this hour. And I believe that the success of our ministry in the days ahead is based on His grace and His power. And uh, as the world is just becoming more called to the things of God, uh, but uh, when it comes to great grace and great power, it will help us to reach out to people and minister. So we rely completely on God. So uh, on today's uh, word, our scripture will be from Acts chapter 4, verse 33, our team of scripture here. Uh, great power the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. So we see the apostles of Jesus Christ needed that great grace and great power. How much more we uh, need that great, great, great grace and great power, whether to minister to people or to live the victorious Christian life. When we see uh, uh, very dangerous sickness and disease and plagues coming in this time, we need that great, great, great grace and great power to heal the sick, to be healed ourselves, to be protected and all of that. I just prayed a few minutes ago to, with a sister uh, th that uh, she had uh, the coronavirus and we've been praying for that and her children, her two children, and she was uh, telling me her victorious recovery. You see, uh, God said in his word, I am the Lord that healeth thee. So we thank God for still he hears prayer and he answers prayer now. Uh, her children completely recovered, and 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 and, and now they are going to. Uh, they have finished their quarantine time. Going to mix with the society. We bless the name of the Lord. It is good to be protected. It's good to be not to be affected or affected, but also, you know, uh, I call it to be healed. Is a, is a miracle. Oh, you know, to come out of a problem, but to live in health is a blessing. So well, God wants us to teach us even uh, to walk in the blessed life, uh, in the blessed of health, uh, you know, in the blessed. Uh, but in case you are sick today, um, this can be an encouragement for you. The testimony of the sister that God is a healing God and he's going to heal your sickness you're going to be you're going to come out victorious you're going to uh, overcome those uh, problems that you know with the devil meant it for to kill and destroy you but as you pray seek the lord call upon the name of the lord the name of jesus is an above every other name and in this name there is healing deliverance and and being set free so I pray today for anyone who has this virus been affected, a family, maybe you're uh, watching somewhere, or maybe a letter in this video. I pray that same anointing to come upon you. I rebuke that sickness and disease in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray today that your blessing to come upon every person, the blessing of health be upon everyone watching in the name of of Jesus Christ to praise the name of the Lord. In the book of Colossians, now we're coming to the book of Colossians. Now live your life with passion. You see, the devil is out there to kill your passion. You know, many people lost their passion, uh, passion of living. You know, people who lost the passion of living. Well, you don't take a shower, you don't eat, you don't shave, you know. That kills your passion. But when there is passion in your life, you know, uh, 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 you, you leave your outermost, you know, you, you leave the best. So uh, check your passion, passion for your family. Let not the devil kill the passion for your family. Let not the devil kill the passion for the ministry. Let not the devil kill the passion for living. Let not, above all, the devil kill your passion for the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 and 25. Uh, whatever you do, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me just check this one. Yes. Whatever you do, do it uh, enthusiastically. 
a something done for the Lord and for and not for me. You see here it says passionately, enthusiastically, and uh, whatever you do, do it for the Lord. Whatever you do, you know, you're working, do it for the Lord. You're helping someone, do it for the Lord. You're raising a family, do it for the Lord. You have a job, a business, do it for the Lord. You have a ministry, do it for the Lord. And knowing that you will receive the reward of an inheritance from the Lord. You serve the Lord Christ for the uh, wrongdoers will be paid back for whatever wrong they have done. There is no favoritism. means God is going to reward uh, the good things and also punish. So we see this, you know, the reward thing still works. I, I do believe that. But you see, so here, uh, first of all, we need to be passionate. I was watching today on TV, uh, I think on the reality show, I don't know what the, sh the name of the show is, but they talk, they talk about real people, and there was a man uh, who was a, a, a drunkard and uh, addicted and alcoholic, and um, family were in rank and relatives, everybody was affected uh, because of him. And finally, uh, especially, you know, he loves his daughter. He has like a uh, 13 or 14 years old daughter, and, and uh, that, you know, uh, his habit of drinking, really, you know, it's been like for a long time, affected his marriage, and and, and he, he lost his marriage now. His his uh, sisters and brothers have been affected, and, and then he has another girlfriend, is not married, but still been alcoholic too, but gave up and fed up. She loves him, but wants to help him, but his, his lifestyle was terrible. So, the family decided that he should see a trappist and uh, and you know like he they they tried to convince him that he he has to go into the the process of uh, rehab and all those you know alcohol recovery programs and um, but he was not willing at first but the family decided and uh, he always wanted the love of his daughter it's like kind of his uh, uh, reason for leaving. He doesn't want to lose that. But his daughter said, I'm not going to call you. I'm not going to meet you again if you don't go into this rehab. And all the others who uh, took him to the alcoholic like shops and they say, we're not going to drive you there. We're not going to give you money. You know, all of them cut that. And that really was painful for him and forced him to get into this uh, a program and then of course later you know uh, happy ending he came out of this problem in two months time mix it with his family you see the passion for his family caused him to decide because you know am I going to love this alcohol more than my family you know that made him to uh, decide you see the same way here if you know what Jesus did for you and the love that he has for you then you know you compare the scene and you compare uh, is the Bible talks about Moses uh, you know he despised the pleasure of uh, a momentarily pleasure of sin in Egypt and he chose to suffer with the children of God you see because he he knew his reward would be great. If you know that the reward that when you forsake sin and when you start to live for the Lord, that's exactly where this scripture talks about. There's a great reward in following living for the Lord. Of course, you know, alcoholic, being alcoholic and being a drag addict, it just devastates your life completely. So uh, when people... Uh, uh, lose passion in life, when they lost passion, they got into some kind of uh, bondage. The sin bondage becomes more stronger. But you know, your passion, when, when the Lord is your passion, when the Lord is your passion, uh, no matter what happens, you know that the reward comes from the Lord. You know that things are not going to be the same always. Things are going to be change it. So you decide to live for the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the book of 
Colossians is talk about more on living on the Lord, living for the Lord, and thinking of the the reward is that God has for our life. It talks about that, and and uh, uh, of course. Uh, this is, of course, the key thing, you know, passion, passion, passion is very important. The youth, the young generation lost passion for everything. People lost passion of studying and they get into, uh, you know, uh, uh, different uh, problems. So, well, you know, th th that's not really, uh... oh, praise the Lord. Just give me a second. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So uh, they get into this this problem, and uh, and uh, uh, when when we are not passionate, you see, you know, it's just just take it. Lord, give me the passion again. If you lose the passion, pray, pray before God that you may get the passion you have. For the Lord, let not the devil kill your passion in the name of Jesus Christ. So, uh, so we need that great, great, great grace and great power. That, and, and, and when you're passionate, you know, you, you open up yourself to receive great grace and great power. So, but we don't have passion. We don't pray, we're not interested, you know. When you are not passionate, let me say this. You, there is food that gives energy to your body, right? When you eat food, and good food, and nutritious food, uh, uh, food that has nutrition. And when you eat that, you can have greater energy and power. But what if you don't eat, and you don't have passion? to eat uh, that means you cannot get the energy that is available by eating the food it's the same thing when you eat the word of god when you pray and seek the lord there is energy and power and great grace and great power coming upon you but when you lose the passion when you lost the passion then the power is available the grace is available, but you're not going to receive it. You're not going to be benefited from that. From from that. So we need to uh, be uh, make sure that we make our passion lively. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The first thing, the first thing, uh, there are a few things that Paul talked about here. Um, uh, First thing we have to know is that we died with Christ. That's, that's a good thing. Colossians 2, 20, 2 uh, 20 and 21, the Bible says, if you died with the Messiah, they're just taking you one chapter back. You know, we're seeing chapter 3 of Colossians, but chapter 2, beginning chapter 2, and it brings into chapter 3 the same uh, idea I had. If you died with the Messiah, with Christ, to the elements force of this world. Why do you live as if you still belong to the world? Why do you submit to regulations? Don't handle, don't taste, don't touch. You know, you already died with Christ. So now it's talking about our old nature, that sinful nature. So we have to, Romans, Paul, the same message, Romans, Paul says, count it. That your old man is die, you know, crucified with Christ. It can't be like that. Think about it like that. That my old nature, my sinful nature, that drugs me to sin, that drugs me to alcohol and all addictions. And that old man is broken from our life. That's the first step to be set free from, from uh, addiction. Uh, praise the name of the Lord. And then, and then here, uh, chapter 3 also talked about the same thing in chapter 3 uh, that Paul talked about, uh, that our life is hidden in Christ. That means when you are born again, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your, boy, as your Lord and Savior, He's inside of you, your life is hidden in Christ. First, understand that your old nature is you know, which is already uh, dead. And when you are baptized, of course, you say, I'm, I'm already crucified with Christ. So I don't want to just stay, you know, a dry uh, flesh on, you know, 
dried on, on, on the cross, but I, I, I want to be buried. That's why you ask baptism. So in baptism, you're buried with Christ. And then when you come out of the water, you testify that you are going to live a new life under the power of Christ and dying for the world and then living for Christ. Colossians 2, 3, 1 and 2. If you have been raised with the Messiah, that means, you know, if that's literally when baptism, that what, what happens and seek what is about, where the Messiah is seated at the right hand of God, set your mind on what is above, not on, the, on what is on the earth. So one of the things that cause you to lose passion is when you become earthly minded. You think everything earthly, think about, you know, the earthly things, and you start to measure success on terms of the earthly things and what you just walk on, what is seen, not on what is unseen. And then that's the time you start to lose your passion. But if you focus on the things of heaven, if you focus on the things that is above, above is God, the Father, the Holy Spirit, Christ, you know, the things of heaven and the reward that you, you get in the last days when Christ comes back after preaching the gospel and all that and the, the, the sacrificial life that you live for Christ. If we have a heavenly minded, then we don't lose our passion. But if you uh, are not heavenly minded, then you lose your passion so easily. So you have to have someone has to come and find the fun again, the flame in you that is uh, dying, and so that you may be passionate. You see, oh, there's so many people who lost their passion, passion for ministry, passion for church, passion for for the things of God, and and because you see, the devil, when the devil, uh, you know, diverts your focus from the heavenly things and cause you to focus on the earthly things, you lose your passion. Many quit ministry losing the passion. But I tell you that this world is temporary and eternal. There is an eternal home, eternal kingdom. And you stand and, and be passionate for the Lord. I tell you that you'll go from one glory to another glory. Praise the name of the Lord. So our life is hidden in, in Christ. So there are a few things here. Uh, the apostle advising us. The first one says, kill the old nature. Kill the old nature. But that means uh, we should be uh, always uh, kill the old nature. That means the sinful nature. Now, how do you kill something? How do you kill something that has life? How do you kill a plant? Or, you know, it's the same thing with animals too. But uh, the first is by disconnecting. See, when you disconnect a plant from the root, from the, from the earth, from the ground. And then that plant will eventually die, disconnected. So as the soul lifts the body, when there is disconnection, death means separation. As the soul lifts the body, we say the person is dead because that's disconnection. When you disconnect, that means the person dies. That's what we're talking about here, death. So disconnect means when it comes to sin, you stay away. Turn away. That's what repentance means. Turn away. You used to think that should be, that was right. But now you say, no, that's not right. I'm not going to walk that way. By starving it, another one, starving it. You don't give a flower uh, water and, and then become thirsty and starving for water and thirsty for water. 
collapse, die. So when you don't uh, feed the flesh, it's lust and desire. When it is starved, you're killing it. You're killing that passion, uh, sinful passion, by starving it. Don't give it. Don't nurture it, you see? Hatred can be can die if you do not nurture it. Lust can, uh, if we don't feed our flesh, our mind, to the desire and this lust, it will die. Starve it. Don't give it air. Suffocate it, like, you know, when there is no air. How do you suffocate it? Well, of course, the Bible talks about that in Colossians, a uh, nice way. Fill it with the things of God, you see? Uh, in Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, let the message above, about the Messiah, dwell richly among you. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and singing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs with gratitude in the in your hearts to God, when you have gratitude, singing, talking about the word, and you share the word together, you see, and and sing together for the I mean, you are suffocating the sinful nature, and and you're killing, you're choking it. That's exactly what you do by singing or talking. But you talk about the world, you talk about sin and how wonderful it is. You are giving it uh, life again. You are giving it energy. But you stay away, abstaining, you're staying away from those things and, and surround yourself with the godly atmosphere, with praises, songs. And then the power of sin is destroyed. And that's sometimes that you need to uh, uh, walk away from friends that drag you into living a sinful lifestyle that encourages you to live that sinful style. We need to walk away from those, those people and turn away if it does not help you to be passionate for Christ. Associate with people that will increase your passion for Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. So Paul uh, talked about this one. And uh, uh, so in Colossians, uh, he also mentioned about uh, the two kinds of clothes. The old clothes that we need to put off and the new clothes that we need to put on. Colossians chapter 3, verse 8, to 10, 10, 8 and 10. But now you, now, now you must also put away all, uh, all the, the following. Anger. Wow. Now, you know. When it comes to drinking, being alcoholic, or drugs, or, you know, these are major ones, okay? Being adultery, or, and, and, or fornication. The difference between adultery and fornication, adultery is a sexual intercourse between a married, unmarried, I mean, married uh, uh, people with the married ones, we call it adultery. But for those who are single, but still, before marriage, any sexual act, we call it fornication. That's what the Bible, we need to get rid of both. But now, you know, these are major and it's, and it's easy for anyone to understand. But when it comes to anger, that's something every Christian has to deal with. You know, you have to put off this, anger, wrath. What is wrath? There's too much anger, I think. And, and, and the action you take, the anger may be, in, in the heart, then rises you, you come out and with that anger and you start to do a beat to throw stuff and all those ras, malice, slander, fills your language from your mouth, you know, get rid of this and, and don't lie, uh, not, uh, do not lie to one another since you have put off the old self, that's the old man. The Adamic nature. That one, uh, you know, the Adamic nature, we have put off that one. Good thing. With its practices and have put on the new self, that is the life of Christ. And that gives us energy to live the good life. 
It's not going to buy your own strength, but Christ in you. You put on Christ, and you are being renewed in the knowledge according to the image of your Creator. That means there, your mind becomes renewed. So say, well, I don't. I'm not gonna, uh, you know, give uh, something that boost my anger, you starve your anger. Say, no, I'm dead with Christ. I can't be angry. No, I'm not going to have wrath. No, I forgive. I choose to do it because I have a new nature. You know, you start to glorify Christ because you have a new nature. When you say it's not me, but it's Christ in me, then the power will be, will be manifested in our, in our life. You see, this anger, wrath, there's so many uh, uh, problems arise if people, due to anger, due to wrath, if we don't avoid these things, it's very costly. It costs life, time, energy, money. You know, it's just, it's just a loss by itself. That's why the Bible says, Get rid of this. Get rid of this. People getting angry and getting wrath and led her to regret. So, as a Christian, it just tells us the life that we should live and the life that we can live by the power of great grace and, you know, by the power of God with great grace and great power will help us to live that life. Now, and then when you do something, now you see what makes you even passionate. You know, I'm talking more emphasis on passionate, you know. Passionate to do righteous things and, and passionate and not to be passionate to do unrighteous things, you know. Those things, they're not good. They're not helpful, you know. So Colossians 3, 23 to 25, the Bible says, Whatever you do, do it enthusiastically as something done for the Lord. Do it for the Lord. Yeah. When you help someone, tell them I'm doing it for the Lord. Yeah, I know that, you know, when you do it even for the person, tell them that, you know why I do this? I do it for the Lord. And the person will glorify God in you. Wow, I really saw Christ in him. And that's the, the greater reward that you need to get from people. And every one of us, we should do it for Christ. Yeah, I do it for the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And it says, and not for me, knowing that you will receive the reward of an inheritance from the Lord. You see, you do something good for a person and he doesn't even say thank you. I mean, you should have said thank you when, when someone does that. But what if you meet someone that you did a lot to him and he didn't want to say even thank you? You don't get angry. Why? Because you know that you did it for the Lord. And your reward will be from the Lord. And what you give also, give to the Lord. See? And then you won't be disappointed. You give it to the Lord. Forget it. And God will give you a reward. A hundred, four, six, ten, ten. You did it to me. He says, you did it to me. That's why, you know, the, the, the ten virgins in the Bible, when you read, uh, the five ones who went uh, to heaven and who met it when the Lord comes, and, and then he said that, oh, you are a blessed of my father. Get into, you know, inherit the kingdom that is prepared for you from the foundation of the world. He said, I was hungry. You fed me. I was naked. You closed me. I was in prison, you visited me. And those five would say, oh, Lord, when? We've never seen you hungry and we didn't. No, 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 you did. Because you did to one of this. And they were, you know, those people are people who did things for the Lord, not for people. That's why they were surprised. Lord, we, did we do it for you? Oh, without that, you know. But say, you did it to me. And, and I believe they have that mind. And the reward comes. You, you hear that sound, that voice, well done, my son, well done, my daughter. And I, I wish to hear that word 
And I believe that you have also the same intention to hear the well done part. So, uh, passionate thing is like you do it for the Lord. And the other thing is that, the sixth thing we see that let pleasing the Lord be your purpose in life, just to please. Actually, in Colossians 3.20, it says, Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. The same thing. When, you, uh, when children obey their parents, the parents will be pleased. Imagine how the same thing. God will be pleased when his children obey him and, and, and follow him. Because when we follow his instructions and guidance, it's safety for us. And all God delights us because of our safety, that the enemy will not get a chance. So he, he doesn't want the enemy to have any chance to attack, to, to havoc our life, to mess up in our life and in our ministry and our family. That's why God gives us some instructions, the Holy Spirit to follow. That is get rid of anger and you know, all those things. Lying one another, don't lie to one another, be honest and all that. Because those things are the footholds, the footsteps of the devil. If you get that footholds, you just sneak in and then make trouble, lots of trouble. So that's one of the spiritual warfare. Living according to the direction of the Holy Spirit. Living the spiritual life. It some, uh, just helps you to, to, to uh, push back the force of darkness. So let not the devil get a foothold. Mm. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you. You are so good. I pray bless everyone, Lord. Bless and give that power, energy, strength today. That let not the devil get any foothold in the name of Jesus. That he stood in, standing there in the land and bring distraction. Let it not be in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And then, and then, uh, do, don't do something that puts a... Uh, 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 that puts uh, off the fire from someone, you know, uh, that kills the fire. Colossians 3.22, fathers, he's talking about fathers. Usually fathers are sometimes get a little bit hard on their children. Do not uh, exasperate your children till they won't become discouraged. You see, let not not be discouraged. Uh, uh, don't don't be harsh on them. Harsh on them uh, to the extent that they be discouraged. I mean, actually, we shouldn't be, we shouldn't discourage anyone. Not only to your children, to your wife, to your sister, to your brother, to your mother, to your father. I mean, to anyone. So let's be an uh, encourager, encouraging someone. Because, uh, you know, life itself, there are so many things discouraging. But let's encourage someone. Say, say, learn to say good words. Hallelujah. Speak good words. Say, encourage somebody. And when you smile and say good words, that makes a big difference. Hallelujah. Don't do, don't do something that put off the fire on someone's life, especially your children. And watch out. You're going to discipline them, but not to the extent that they be discouraged. Because that discourages means they start to, <clears throat> they start to lose their passion. They start to lose their passion. So they shouldn't lose their passion. So uh, do something that creates passion in the lives of people. That makes them to be passionate for the Lord more. Uh, that means just, you know, be kind again, uh, encouraging again, and, you know, explaining to them. You discipline them, but also, you know, yes. Understand there is a reward system in God's kingdom also. This is a very helpful idea. See, there is a reward system. Uh, the Bible talks about this. Whatever you do, do it enthusiastically as something done for the Lord and not for men, knowing that you will receive a reward, hallelujah, of inheritance that from the Lord. You see, there is a reward. The Lord, help us to always think of the reward 
that you have for us and cause us to be passionate always. And there's also punishment too, because um, uh, if people uh, because of this, um, Colossians 3, 6 says, God's service comes from the disobedient. You know, it talks about all kinds of sin or the works of the flesh. On the disobedient, the wrath of God comes. When? Well, even now in this age, there is a wrath of God, but in the age to come. When Christ comes, if people are continuing disobedience, you tell them, and God gives them opportunity, chances to repent all their lifetime. They have many chances. You see, but if they don't use that chance, then the wrath of God comes on the final day. But God did not call this for the wrath. He called us to inherit salvation. If you are a child of God, be an obedient child of God. Let God be always pleased in your life, smiling because of you. Praise the name of the Lord. So the wrath of God, and there is a lot of trouble for sinners, the Bible says. But, you know, of course there are troubles in this world when we leave. But as we trust in the Lord, we overcome. And the problems and troubles that we have today, as we just, you know, obedient children of God, praying, we see them change it. Because God is a good God. He changes seasons and times. What we see today won't, won't be tomorrow. And the circumstance that we are in today will not be even tomorrow. It would be another day. God moves and changes things. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And also talks about more on husband and wife relationship and, uh, you know, worker and boss relationship. It just talks about in Colossians, especially when it comes to husband and wife. It says, wives be submissive to your husbands. I think I heard this. Uh, it's hard for the wives to be submissive because the Bible says submiss to your husband. And also, uh, because of that, God said, submit. What does it mean? It uh, means, uh, in, in some cases, when there is a final word, uh, we need to uh, follow that. We need to be, uh, somebody has to say and have the final word. Of course, let God's plan be the final plan or the final word for our home. And then as it is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter towards them. Why? Maybe there are some, some uh, things that can make you bitter, uh, you know, but uh, don't be bitter. Uh, what means forgive and forget. That's all for the husband. And the wives, the husband has to love. That's the hardest thing, right, for a man. But for wife, didn't say that she should love because for wife's probably it's natural. But now you need the grace and the power to be submissive. Lord, give me the grace to be submissive in a in a proper way. It's not being, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's not like the the husband should crush and be on the top. It doesn't mean that way. Is, and also another place and meet one another. It, it just talks about being, uh, of course, we're equal. It's not being above and low thing. It's being about the law, being willing and cooperative in, in every way. That makes life more easier. And, uh, and that, that helps us and, uh, and to love. We're in seven heart. We need to ask God to give us his grace and power. With your grace and power, Lord, I can do it. And we can be passionate for life. Passionate in your work. Passionate in your family and raising kids. Passionate in your marriage and the relationship. Passionate in serving the Lord in the ministry. 
passionate. That's the word for you. And I, I pray that this weekend that you will more consider on things that kills your passion and do something about them. Especially seeing kills our passion. So you got to get rid of that. And then you'll get your passion back. And uh, as God gives you his grace and power, you will do great exploit. Hallelujah. If you've met, if you have not met Jesus, the Lord of your life, why don't you ask him to come into your heart today, saying, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive my sins. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for dying for me on the cross. And thank you for making this life available by your Holy Spirit. Empower me to live for you, to be passionate for you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, I believe that the Lord is with you and gives you that power to live passionately. Praise the name of the Lord. I hope that you're blessed with this message today. And uh, I want to pray and bless your weekend and the coming week until we meet again. And... Uh, that the blessing of the Lord be upon you. Father, I thank you for this moment. Give you praise and glory. Bless everyone, Lord, that has heard this message. He'll ever seek. Lord, restore the passion, everyone's passion, our passion back. Give it the energy, Lord, to be passionate for you, to live for you the rest of our life. We give you praise and glory. Thank you, Lord. Let the provision of the Lord come upon those also sow seed and support this ministry. Prosper them in every way in the name of Jesus. Let their family be at peace, Lord. Their children be obedient in the name of Jesus Christ. Help the fathers and mothers to raise their children in godly ways. Give them heavenly wisdom to uh, bring up their children in the fear of God. Yes, in the fear of God. Father, we thank you. Let all we have, the fear of the Lord, and that fear will help the Lord to live the life that he wants us. Thank you for your word. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. God bless you. Have a blessed, a blessed day, a wonderful week, week, uh, weekday. Hope to see you again. Bye for now.